This video is brought to you by a better route planner, the route planner for EVs. Hundreds of cars are supported, choose your configuration, plan your route with the charging network that you want to prefer or charging networks that you want to avoid. If you're a premium member, you can use real-time weather forecast and traffic information and you can also use a better route planner in your car with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Use the link in the description to support the channel and use a better route planner premium for 30 days for free. Good morning everyone! Today it's time long distance trip test with my Volkswagen ID7 Pro Hank. I have done a long distance trip with this car, of course, a video, but this was in December of 2023 when I got the car. I drove 1000 kilometers, but now I do it in the summer and I do my long distance trip test where I drive 593 kilometers and see what the average speed is so only highway um, and I started with around 97 percent reset my trip and um, so far 200 watt hours per kilometer average consumption I'm driving 140 because I think that's the best since this car charges well uh, great as well this is the words and I'm navigated to the first charger. It tells me I arrived with 32%. I think that will be lower because the car thinks I'm driving 130, but it will learn. By the way, I'm not in eco mode. I'm in normal mode. Right now I'm in a speed limit. Um, I still have, I can't see because I have to switch here, highways, but we'll see. I have my uh, uh, climate on 20 degrees. It's not heating, it's not cooling, no AC. And I see that when it's blue, that means it's not heating as well. So everything is cool. I'm in the lowest consumption I can have, <laughs> which by the way is 205 watt hours per kilometer so far. And I still have 170 kilometers to go to get to the first charger. I arrived here with 21%, so I could have driven way faster. We talk about everything in a second, how fast it was. Um, this is my data and it didn't have to preheat the battery. So the temperature before I arrived was already at full. It didn't have to preheat because this battery doesn't have to be hot. The drive here was amazing. Nothing slowed me down except for a few construction zones, especially at the end here. It's 80 for I don't know, 10 kilometers or so. Uh, but I noticed when I, I drove the 140 for the first 100 kilometers and I noticed I arrived still with a very high state of charge. So I accelerated up to 150, drove 150 the whole time. And even then I noticed I will still arrive with a high state of charge. So at the last 50 kilometers I even drove 160. Um, and then sometimes even the top speed. The problem was there was so much construction that I couldn't drive the speed. And 
that's why I arrived with a way too high state of charge, 21%, where this car only charges with 188 kilowatt, where uh, which it would be below lower, it would be 192, which so uh, that the best you arrive with this car at a lower state of charge to have uh, high power charging for a longer time. I already navigated to the next charger and planned my route. 164 kilometers, we see how far I charge, I guess to 200 kilometers of range or so, or even a bit less, something like this. I charged to 54%, that's all I need. I had then 210 kilometers of range and with my 140 driving for 200, what was it? 270 kilometers. So I hope the gasometer, the range display had calculated right. Uh, also I navigated and it tells me I arrive with 10%, which is okay. So I'm gonna drive my 140, see uh, if this changes, but I don't think so. I think 140 now is fine, which is cool. I have 86 kilometers to go to the next charger. I am at 30%. It still thinks I arrive with 10%. So I'm driving my 140. Sounds good. It's not that warm. 17 degrees, the highest I've seen so far was 18, the lowest 16. Uh, but this afternoon it should be uh, 30 something degrees. So very, very interesting. Um, I have to show you the head-up display because uh, I'm gonna talk about how the ID7 is on a long-distance trip and the head-up display is a big part. So I never look at my cockpit, only to see my state of charge and uh, my range, which I can see in my head-up display, but then I have to switch. I have to switch over, then I see state of charge and range and when I go to the right, I see uh, my trip, 84 kilometers to go, 43 minutes, and another thing, here's my average consumption, but I want uh, the trip in there, this is the most important. But it just helps that I never have to look down. Always look here, have the ID light that shows me if I have to go off the highway, but mostly it's the head-up display showing me an error, arrow, that I have to go off and stuff, it's amazing. I arrived here with 11%. I have 177 kilometers to go to home. We stop before that 150 something um, and this is my data so far. Of course, the time and every speed is not correct. The drive to get here was amazing, um, but I did drove the 140 most of the time. Um, I did drive, not drove. Wrong grammatically, German. Um, but at the end I drove 160, but not for long. It was a lot of speed limit to 130, so it was okay. We charge again, just a few minutes to get to around 200, 210 kilometers, I would say, of range. So again, 54%, I think, and then we go. I really charged to 54%, like I said. Um, and I have 214 kilometers of range, 168 kilometers to go. So no problem at all. Um, what? The, what? <laughs> I know, I got a warning that it can't register, uh, can see the traffic signs. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe because of the sun or dirt. No idea. Um, let's talk about how is my Volkswagen ID7 Hank on a long distance trip and I bought the car for a reason and it's exactly that. I want it comfortable, features, massage, 
I have the massage seats on almost the whole time. Ventilated seats, I now have the AC on on 22 and a half. I even put it down to 22 degrees in auto. And it does it really well. The suspension is really nice. Of course, it's not on a level like on an Audi Q6 or a Volvo EX90 or a BMW i7, but it's better than most other cars. Um, noise level in here is great. The cruise control is amazing that I can adjust everything on my steering wheel and don't have to go anywhere. It does, uh, the cruise control reacts very nicely when you accelerate, when you slow down. It, oh, I have to drive a bit faster because there's an idiot behind me. And it also, when you're driving, let's say 140 and then there's a car um, coming towards you, how it slows down, it's just comfortable. It's not, uh, it's just, nice and I like that I, I nothing is stress and weird and then the last is the steering assist it does that great too on the country road like most steering assists it has a few problems with some situations but all over it doesn't it doesn't do the searching so left right where am I where am I and on a highway it does it even better because wider roads and everything and even when you go into a corner a bit fast that people would say oh that's a bit fast going in a corner it still steers amazing the only thing that it has that i don't like is when you do the lane change so when you do a lane change and you do it a bit faster then it's when you are on the other lane and you, it turns back on the steering assist, the travel assist. It's it's a bit a tiny bit of a of a wobble because it steers. Uh, and when you go slow, it's fine. When you go in, in in a strong corner and then do it, it's even worse. So you go over to that lane where you would be smoothing it out that you are now passing in a corner. This is just no. You stay in the middle. That's the only thing that I have a negative point with. Of course. Um, it's annoying that I have to press the OK button for privacy settings on, on my car. This car still has 4.0 software on it. Newest is 5.4, which where the with this, uh, window will go away after a while without doing anything. Um, and But I'm still on 4.0. Original software. <laughs> the car is just great when it comes to consumption. I never drove under 140 when I could, and it's under 210 watt hours per kilometer average consumption. That's just amazing. Um, and that's and it charges great. 800 volt system, then it would be amazing, it, it, incredible, but it's still okay. Only 30 kilometers to go, but that's home 16 kilometers till we end the trip. And it was busy here at the A3, but it was okay. It was okay, it wasn't as horrible as I thought. I could drive the 140 and uh, so 10, 20 kilometers. I even drove 180 uh, just to, because I saw it's fine. I arrive at home now with 6%. And from the ending point when I stop filming here, I can drive very slow, so it's fine. So, so cool. Um, and speed limit is over in a second too. I arrived at 10.56, so drive, drove five hours in two minutes for 591. I think GPS will see it's 593 kilometers. And I can deduct uh, five minutes for a pee break and twice waiting at a light. 
Then let's analyze this drive. My average consumption was 205 watt hours per kilometer, 591 kilometers the car showed, a real kilometer 593. It took me 297 minutes. Uh, I deducted the five minutes, like I said, pee break and then waiting on a, at a light for two minutes. And I get to an average speed of 119.8 kilometers an hour. This is almost as fast as the Audi RS e-tron GT performance, which has a high uh, consumption, but it charges with 320 kilowatt up to 60%, which is incredible. Uh, the, the bad thing that the Audi had on that day, it was raining and the traffic wasn't amazing. And I made a mistake with charging. It could be faster. I think that the, on a summer day like Hank here um, had, I think the Audi could do 125, so be faster. But still, this is amazing. Uh, amazing result here charging sessions we have 10 minutes the first time 27 kilowatt hours 21 to 54 percent i could have been faster i should have driven faster and arrived with 10 percent or so then the times i think would have been a bit faster but average power of 162 kilowatt second char charging session 13 minutes 36 kilowatt hours average 166 kilowatt which is good 23 minutes charge on a 600 kilometer trip. I think that's nice. Only 63 kilowatt hours. That's the stuff. But great weather. I didn't need the, the heat nor the AC. Did I need the AC at the end? I don't even remember. It's been a while. Um, but Hank performed nice. Was uh, was a great test. And, and again, I made the mistake. I could have driven f faster in the beginning. I could have driven 150, maybe even 155 for the first leg that then it would be a few minutes faster and then maybe 121 kilometers an hour average uh, speed something like this but still Hank is great for the long distance trip even if you drive a bit faster and um, I have seen that many many times when I drive a bit further with the car and it charges amazing as long as you arrive at around 15% or under then you get really amazing charging power. If you want to follow me on Instagram battery life one and if you want to support the channel there's a Patreon link in the description below and here on YouTube there's also channel membership but that's it for me thank you much for watching have a great day and take care bye